Hi, my name is Dr. Benji Dillon, a cosmetic surgeon from London, United Kingdom, and this is my practice inspiration. What I'd like to share with you is my firm belief in the fact that the worlds of cosmetic dentistry and facial aesthetics truly belong together. I'm so passionate about this that the two worlds should come together to lead to better outcomes for patients, but also better outcomes for our businesses. To be able to describe why I believe this and why I've come to this conclusion, I want, you to I want to take you through my story. So it really starts out with the fact that I trained in cosmetic and plastic surgery at a very well-renowned hospital called the Queen Victoria Hospital in East Grinstead. It was known for effectively creating plastic surgery. It treated some of the pilots that crashed in World War II and reconstructed their faces. And this really started to take me on a journey that I didn't appreciate at the time. I started to work with patients that had facial palsy. And purely by using things like botulinum toxin, we were able to make significant improvements to their face, their smile, and their lives. I subsequently went and worked for Allegan. I became the medical director for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And it was there that I ran research and understood products like Botox, the product that they brought to the market and helped create the aesthetic industry itself. I also worked with dermal fillers. Dermal fillers mainly made from hyaluronic acid that were used to create volume, restore volume, and create lift to their face to beautify patients. And now that's led me to today. All of those experiences have led me to believe and live what I'm trying to tell you, that these two worlds do belong together. And I'm building, with you to complete this practice, a purpose-made uh, clinic that brings together cosmetic dentistry with my business partner, and facial aesthetics led by myself under one roof. And what we're aiming to do is deliver a unique experience where patients don't have to go to two different practices. We also want to deliver a unique consultation process where we, which we are developing to assess the whole face, the smile and the soft tissues. So the question you're probably asking yourself is why on earth should we consider improving faces beyond the smiles and the things you do fantastically well every single day? And really it starts with the fact that it's big business. Our consumers are spending huge amounts of money on their smiles and their faces and we expect by 2024, according to this market research, the value of the cosmetic dental market globally to be around $28 billion. And for the cosmetic surgery, this is surgical and non-surgical, to be around $44 billion. But what's really interesting is that about 50% of consumers are seeking both treatments. This is effectively a patient coming into your clinic wanting cosmetic dentistry or smile makeover is already considering facial aesthetics treatments and may well be going to another clinic. Now, what I really like doing is looking at how the market behaves and how our patients, or what we could call our consumers, are behaving. And we only have to look at mergers and acquisitions, and we've got to look at companies like Amazon. They're buying other industries and other businesses to make a more unique consumer experience, offering more options to their uh, consumers. Google. Facebook. Facebook has acquired WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. And I've just heard the other day, they're bringing these together because they want to streamline their services. They're understanding people want easier lives. If we look at the healthcare sector, Allegan, the company I worked with, was, the, uh, was part of a major acquisition, one of the largest in pharmaceutical history. And they were bought by activists. Activists, rebranded as Allegan, then went on to buy CoolSculpt. Many know this as a non-invasive fat reduction treatment, very popular in the United States, but also didn't stop there. They went and bought Kythera. This is a non-surgical treatment to effectively dissolve fat in an injectable way. And also another product that's in development is a topical Botox. They're consolidating everything to provide more options to their consumers, as well as another company, Mertz, another injectable manufacturer that has bought a device to tighten skin. I therefore believe this red area is where the future lies in our practices. And the, it's all about improving patient experiences under one roof. And it starts with the why, which is improving patient satisfaction, the aesthetic outcomes of our patients. We know that patients come in for smile rejuvenation, but they may well be considering improving other elements of the face. It's an improved patient journey. Your patient no longer has to go up the road or find an, a cosmetic doctor to go for their injectable treatments. They trust you. 
and it's improved patient retention. This is one of the most interesting things I've discovered with my dental business partner. He's explained, the fact to, he's explained to me the fact that many of his patients are one-off big treatments and he may not see them for years. However, patients come to me every three to four months. We're able to sell skincare, we're able to maintain and build that relationship over time. And this is something that could add a different element to your practice. Now, beautification is an innate thing. People understand beauty from a very early age, and there's some data generated in 2004 published in The New Scientist that showed babies as young as one day old were able to identify a beautiful face versus a non-beautiful face. This is effectively telling us that we understand and visualize beauty in an innate manner. We recognize it subconsciously. Therefore, treating just the smile without beautifying the rest of the face could be missing a trick. The human gaze. Numerous studies have, have understood where we look on the face. Yes, we look at the teeth, but look at this. It shows the concentration of the gaze on the lips, the nose, and the eyebrows. And what this is all telling me is that beauty is the whole face. It's a holistic and should be a holistic approach. Addressing both the skin and smile leads to global beautification, in my opinion. And these are just a few examples. Yes, they're wearing makeup, but look at Catherine Zeta-Jones. She's obviously had her teeth addressed. But we know she's had non-surgical treatments to narrow her nose, improve the volume in her cheeks, and the outcome is more beautiful. Uh, a famous singer from the United Kingdom, my home, homeland, again had her teeth and facial aesthetics addressed, and it leads to a more holistic beautification. Now you may well be asking, as a dentist, how on earth do I start to own this journey and own this consumer? Well, just like me looking at dentistry, it's familiarizing yourself with the specialty. It's understanding what is possible, but it's also understanding how to conduct a consultation. You do consultations every day, you're masters at it. And it's adding just a few other elements that could lead to an assessment. Assessing elements that I'll go through that could lead to a treatment plan. You may be asking, well, you know, I'm great at what I do, but what are my options? How can I actually start to implement a facial aesthetic practice in my clinic? And this could be either upskilling yourself, I know a number of phenomenal dentists who are phenomenal injectors. Or it could be partnering with a dedicated provider. In the US that could be a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, or in some cases and in some states a registered nurse who specializes in this area. Assessment and treatment therefore can be conducted in my belief by all specialities with the appropriate training. How I like to break down the assessment of a patient when it comes to facial aesthetics is PEG. It starts with proportion. When I look at the face, the first thing I'm looking at is the thirds. I'm looking at the most disproportionate third, and that is effectively telling me the third I have to address treatment. The face should really fit a number of ideals of proportion, and we can modify these with injectables as I'll come to show you. The second thing, and sorry, this is a bit more about proportion. We know that morphing a face from a square or disproportionate face to a more proportionate face, applying the Marcotte face mask, is a more beautiful and leads to a more beautiful outcome. Again, another example, the, face ha the Marcotte face mask has been applied to this face, and you can see from the image, without telling you, that one is more beautiful than the other. So therefore, we can make changes to the proportions of the face that lead to a superior beautification. The second element of assessment is uh, emotions. No one wants to display and communicate negative emotions. Sagginess, tiredness, these are bags under the eyes, and a non-feminine jawline, a masculinity that they don't want to project can all be addressed with injectables. And then lastly is glow, the G in PEG. This is improving skin, skin quality and the look of skin. This could be sun damage and can very easily be addressed with high quality skincare. So what is our goal? Our goal is moving away from making someone who's 50 years old look 30, because this leads to frozen, unnatural, and obvious results. We don't want to do that. We instead want to move to very natural outcomes. This is what I call positive aging. It's making someone look the best version of their self at that age. It's age-appropriate treatments. This leads to more natural outcomes. And I'm a big believer in injectables, we can make patients go out into the world and no one should know that they've had anything done and they should keep their friends and family guessing if they don't tell anyone. It's also about education. 
One of the key things I do is educate every single patient on how the face ages. And this is really about volume loss. It's how losing volume in the cheeks actually causes the folds around the nose that a lot of people come in asking about, the nasolabial lines. This tells me I have to actually use a bit of filler and a bit of volume in your cheeks to make this improved. Then it's the right injection strategy. And this comes down to practical training. How do you deliver these results using an accepted strategy with validated results to improve outcomes and improve volumization, rather than blindly filling? And we know if any of these aren't adhered to, it leads to bad outcomes with dermal fillers and you know, feeds the stigma people have with it. You've just got to look at these beautiful actresses that have almost been debeautified because their proportions have been thrown out somewhat by the wrong placement of product. And it goes on to real, and I'd like to go through real life results. This is a patient of mine who was an actor. He wanted to you know, go for an audition he didn't want to tell me about. And with just dermal fillers in the space of two treatment sessions, we were able to improve what he thought was his masculinity. We were able to improve his gummy smile, not with Botox, but with dermal fillers. And we're able to give him a better profile and jawline, something he would otherwise have had to go orthomatic surgery. He went on to become an actor in Hamilton, and uh, unfortunately I didn't get any tickets for that. There's also tired eyes. We can make an improvement to the bags under the eyes with a 15 minute treatment. And the key is not making these people look different, but simply taking away a negative emotion. A feminine jawline. Women don't want to have a masculine jawline, a bulky jawline. A combination here of Botox and dermal fillers can slim the face down and lead to a more beautiful result without making it look obvious. Another uh, masculine jawline. This is about using just fillers. And in this case, we used around 10 syringes. But use it in a very strategic way to lift and feminize the face. Sagginess. In years gone by, this would have been a facelift patient. Weeks of downtime, very expensive. Now with just injectables, and this is actually the after, immediately after treatment, you can see that we can make pretty good improvements to the jawline and defining the jawline by purely the use of dermal fillers in the chin area. Class three malocclusion. This is a patient who, again, didn't want to go through orthodontics or orthognathic surgery, but just wanted to improve a profile. Subtle placement of filler in the anterior cheek as well as the top lip has just helped balance her profile without it making it look like she's had anything done or undergoing invasive surgery. Improving profiles even further, filler placement in the chin gives these people a better outcome, something that they're happy when they're taking their selfies on their phones every day, and again, avoid surgery. This was performed in about 15 minutes as well. One of my most favorite treatments is uh, non-surgical rhinoplasties. In years gone by to improve the bump on the nose, or the dorsal hump as we call it, it would involve a rhinoplasty, a surgical treatment. We can do this in 15 minutes, just with dermal fillers to improve the profile of the nose. Significant results with non-invasive options. And then lastly, glow. I talked about this, but adding devices, very simple devices into a clinic can improve things like acne scarring. And I've just got to think about orthodontic clinics where you're getting uh, patients of a younger age who are starting off with acne or may have acne scarring. These can improve with non-invasive laser device-based treatments. So in conclusion, we are actually both looking at the same painting, but we are, we're having different interpretations of it. And I believe we need to start coming together as communities and specialties to really look at the painting and come up with a combined treatment plan for optimal beautification. I do believe that cosmetic dentistry and facial aesthetics belong together for holistic beautification, to improve the patient experience, stop them going off to other clinics and retain that patient, and also um, improving the quality of outcomes that they can get from their treatments of facial aesthetics and cosmetic dentistry. But expertise and training is required. And what I would say is that protocols need to be put in place, some of the things we're developing for a whole face assessment and unique treatment planning. So in conclusion, Botox and dermal fillers can complement a beautiful smile and I'd love to welcome all of you to uh, Beaconsfield, where I'm based just outside of London, and our clinic is being built um, to come and spend some time with us. Thank you.